I was brand new working for this place and I was 20 something and it was I was there alone usually the owners came in a little later and we knew it was haunted uh, we had all kinds of things we have all I've got all kinds of stories about <laughs> this building uh, so I was working and it was a rainy day and I heard that so the way this building was set up it was kind of it's long like this building here and there was a door in the very back where we parked in the back and we would come in the very back rooms were storage and our framing area the middle part was bathrooms and then there were two shops in the front and then we also had an upstairs so I'm working alone and I'm cleaning glass and it was all into my cleaning and it was kind of a rainy day and real quiet and I was enjoying the fact that it was quiet and I heard the door open and I heard boots on the floor and I saw this guy walk by the doorway and he had this long coat on and hat boots on and I remember I was annoyed because I'm like damn it I, I'm all in my cleaning and there's nothing back there so I put my stuff down and I took the three steps to the hallway and I looked and I was like, sir? And I mean, real as real could be. The clothing, I heard the clothing rustling. Um, and uh, so then, <laughs> so I went to the very back and I'm like, oh, he must, maybe he went into these back rooms. I'm thinking maybe he's like stealing from Nobody back there. And then I checked the bathrooms and there was nobody in the bathrooms. And there was no way he got all the way out the door. And then I realized that I had seen a ghost. And wow. that makes me wonder how many we have seen because the one I saw was as solid as you and me. Yeah. And yeah, how I many swore this guy was a real that yeah. we didn't even realize. Right, right. So let me tell you the next story. <laughs> so we had an old phone here at, at this at this first location. We've been in three locations on Main Street. We've been here since 2001 or 2000, uh, right when it was the year 9-11. It was 2000, the year before that. Um, so we had this old phone. It was a blue phone where the the handset sits on the cradle, and you punched in your numbers. Yep. The old timey type. Now it's old timey. She goes back to the <laughs> dial ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the shop was closed. The doors were locked. Uh, they were down in the basement. The basement was really cool because the basement was all limestone walls and a dirt floor. There was there was actually a tunnel that went out to the river that they had somebody had walled up a long time ago. The phone rings while they're down there, so Sandy starts to come up the stairs, and the phone stopped ringing. So she comes back down. She didn't even make it like to the third step, mm -hmm. and so she, the phone stops ringing. So she comes back down, and they, her and John, the owners, they're finishing up. They're moving boxes around in storage. They come back up. They finish like real quickly. They come right back up the stairs, and as they come up the stairs, they heard this bong, 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 bong. Well, here in the States, when the phone is off the hook, back in the day, mm -hmm. you got like mm -hmm. a busy yeah, tone. Okay. So mm -hmm. when yeah. she got to the top of the stairs, and the desk was right there, so imagine, imagine the staircase mm -hmm. is right there. They get to the top of the stairs, and that phone was off the cradle and sitting there. Ah. <laughs> Flash forward. These suckers move around, and they know you. <laughs> um, they're, they've been down here a long time, these ghosts. Mm. So we moved to 142 North Main, which is very far from 612. Uh, so 142 North Main, we're down there. After hours, we're closed up. Kind of a similar setup. There were Our stock and stuff was in the back. There was a long... Anyway, we're closed up. John's in the middle. He's in the bathroom doing what guys do in the bathroom yeah. for a long time. <laughs> what is that, Steve? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't take me a long time. <laughs> anyway, Sandy was in the office, and she was doing her stuff, and the phone rang, and she got up because it was on the wall, and the phone stopped ringing, so she's like, she said, spec down. Well, John comes out however long later, and he says, Sandy, who was on the phone? And she said, well, nobody was on the phone, John. And he said, yeah, there was. There was somebody on the phone. Who did, who, you answered the phone. Who was on the phone? She said, John, I didn't answer the phone. And he got mad because John didn't believe in this kind of stuff. And he said, God damn it, Sandy, the phone's sitting up here on the, on the counter off the hook. You answered the phone. Oh. So it was the Ooh. second time. <laughs> So the third time, oh. and this is all the same phone, the same blue yeah. rotary, whatever you want to call it, punch phone. 
So I'm telling the story. This will give you this will give you the willies too because I'm telling the story to the new girl, and I'm telling her all this has happened. And as I'm telling the story, that phone went <laughs> and made like this weird noise, and I was a little afraid of it. So I picked it up and I'm like, well, it's dead. So I told John, I said, hey, John, the phone's dead. And he got all aggravated. Remember, this is before internet and all that kind of stuff. So he had to go home, called AT&T. They came out. He thought it was a short in the wires or something. It wasn't anything. It was that the, the repairman said that phone had burnt itself up just like that, as I'm telling the story. Yeah. So they listened. Wow. Listen. They're listening <laughs> now. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. And they and they follow and they follow they're they're intelligent. 